Hi there, my name is Jordan Barras, and in this introduction movie, we're going to build a global application with a data object from scratch. All right, let's get going. So what I got running here is the Flobal Trial 3.11. I've got Flobal Work, Design, and Control. And as usual, our story is going to start in Design. I'm going to create a new app, name Demo. Since I'm in the App Editor, I'm going to add a new model, create a new model, Other, and select Data Object. I'm going to store some patient data today. Now, the reason why I've selected this example is because patient data is something that most people have an idea about. What gets stored when you go to the doctor? Do that. And as you can see here in the editor, this is all about the structure of how my data is actually being stored. So let's add a couple of fields. For example, first name, string, last name, again, it's so going to be string, Age of our patient, not going to be a string, but it's going to be an integer. And let's, for example, store when was the last time that the patient has visited our hospital or doctor's. That's a date without time. Okay. Now we, we've defined the structure, and of course, there's in real, reality, there's way more that you typically would store here, but this is a demo after all. Um, so we've got a structure, and now we've got to define how we're going to store this behind the scenes. And that's called a data source in Flow. So when we create a new data source by opening the section here, we can actually select two types. One is the rest. This is when the data is living in another system, and you want to fetch the data whenever you need it in a case or a process. You want to fetch it through REST. Flow will never store the data, but it will call the operations on this data source when needed. What we're going to use today is a database, which is a bit more simple to do. In this case, I also need to give it a name, for example, patient data source, technical key, like everything else in Flowable. And I need to configure where the data should be stored. I'm going to pick, for example, the patient table. Now, when I do this, Flowable will put all my patient data in this table, which is stored next to all the tables of Flowable in the relational database. The uh, system has de detected that I didn't configure a default lookup ID, sorry, or have a, a lookup ID. It's like a primary key in the database. So let's follow the suggestion. And you can see that it now opens a service model. Uh, service models in Flowable are a way to define, to encapsulate service invocations. And it's also being used to define the data source or a data object. So the database has been selected already for us. The data object has been linked. And we now need to define a few things beyond table name. So I'm simply going to say, let's store these fields in columns. And I'm going to use a capitalized name um, with an underscore to avoid any clashes with keywords in the database. It's on last visit. There go. You can also see I have the auto generated, I keep it on, keep it checked because I want to have the system generate IDs for me automatically. I don't want to bother with that. I also need to find a schema. A schema is a model in Flowable that's part of your app, and it's going to capture the life cycle and the changes of your app in the future. If I add new fields, if I delete fields or change type, for example, these would need to go into the schema and they are need to be deployed whenever I have changes. Now create generate now button. You can see this generates a liquid base schema change log for us based on the data that we've provided. If we go back to our data source, to our service model, you can see that it generated for us a couple of out-of-the-box operations, like look up a patient by ID. I didn't need to configure any SQL here. This is all done uh, at runtime by introspecting the structure of our data object model. Same story for create, same story for update, same story for delete. Um, and let's add a new operation now, because one of the things we're going to do now is we're going to show all of our patients on the screen. So we need an operation to find them all, find all. And uh, the type of that is search. Um, I can have a different type if I want to have, for example, a specialized update. For example, I want to update in bulk all of my patients with a certain age. I can do that by this, but we're not going to keep a search. I can define filter parameters. For example, I can say only give me back the patients over 50, for example. Just leave that for now. And I am going to configure some sorting going to say the last name should be the one we're sorting on. So the patient is going to be returned based on, uh, you know, last name A, B, C, etc. Okay. Good. So we've now created the data object model, uh, data source, and the schema. 
there's a many ways in Flowable how I can now uh, insert data into the system, how we can manage the system. Um, but for today, we're going to keep it simple and we're going to create a page that simply displays a table on the screen which we can use to manage our data. So let's go back to our app, add a new model, and select the page now. This one for patients. There we go. Um, and on this page, we simply drag the data object data table, a label. And you can see that the editor now says that we need to configure a few things. Well, we need to say where does the data come from for this data table. So let's select our patient data model. And you can see I now can select an operation. We only had one search operation, so the system already you know, uh, selected this for us automatically. So when I'm going to render, when the system is going to render this uh, data table, it's actually going to use this operation behind the scenes, which is going to generate a SQL at runtime based on our data object model. Um, we want to define now what is the stuff that we want to show on the screen. We don't want to show the ID, but we do want to show all the other fields. And there's many things we can configure here, like the format of our data and many more, but let's leave it on the default for now. And one of the things I want to do is also create new patients. So let's add or uh, check this enable creating button here or checkbox. And I now need to create a form whenever I'm going to gather this data for new patients. I, of course, need a form. form. But luckily for us, because we're working with data object models, we have the structure, we have the field names, we have the types, and design has generated these for us out of the box using the type, for example, the age is a number field, and the last visit is a date field. Um, what else do we want? Well, we also want to enable deletion, and we also want to enable editing, similar like the creation. If I create an edit form, this will be automatically generated. Okay, save it and publish this to our runtime system, which is Flowable Work. There go. There's one important thing I need to do now. I need to go into Flowable Control. I need to go into the Data Object section, find my deployment, find my schema definition. This is the one we just saw on the screen. The reason why I have to do this is because this is quite a dangerous and invasive operation. So this is normally only done by admins or people who know what they're doing. Do this. Let's update the database. There we go. This actually has now executed the schema change log model, created the tables behind the scenes for us. And if we go into global work, refresh here, you can see that we now have a demo app here. And it has our patient's page, but obviously we don't have any data yet. So let's add a couple of pieces of patients, sorry, pieces of information here. So plus this is the form that we had in design before, right? So let's call this one John, sorry, nice John Doe. John is 50. And let's say the last visit was last week. Go. You see that there is now a John Doe in our system. Let's add another one, for example, Jane. So she's 30 and random data. Here we go. You can see that we didn't have to write any line of SQL, didn't have to write anything really technical. Flowable is doing all of this behind the scenes. If we, for example, would click on the age, you can see that now Jane is above because she's you know younger than John. And this will behind the scenes generate the right select with the right order clauses, but we don't need to worry about any of these things. Uh, by ourselves. Uh, we also defined that we have an edit form. So we can actually edit this. There we go. This one again behind the scenes with the right SQL update. And we can del delete them if we want to. Here we go. All right. So this was the uh the first introduction to um data objects. There is obviously way more where this came from. We only created the page right now. Um we in the next movie we're going to use our patient data object model and service or data source in a case model or a process model. And later on, we're going to have some relations between, for example, the patients and their doctors. Um, all right, stay tuned for more. Hope you enjoy this. Thanks.